Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. This playlist is going to be talking specifically about the anatomy and physiology of the reproductive systems. And we're going to begin with the male reproductive system, and then after we complete this, we'll obviously go into the female reproductive system. So this will be a part of a one big playlist. So first, let's discuss some relevant anatomy of the testes. All right, so this sac that hangs down here, this is the scrotum. Okay, I've got that highlighted right here. And the scrotum's main function is really just housing the two testes that males have. So of course, there's a left testis and a right testis. Um, testis with an I-S at the end, that's singular. So when we refer to both of them, it's the testes. And those testes are going to have two major functions. One is to generate a humongous quantity of testosterone, among some other minor hormones and metabolites of testosterone. And the second function is going to be the production of sperm cells, which we're going to later call spermatozoa. Okay? So the scrotum is going to house these two testes right here. Okay? Now if we take a look at the testes, we're going to zoom in right here. Um, here's one of them. Um, the testes are surrounded by two membranes. Okay? Um, the membrane that's directly on the surface of that particular testis is what we call the tunica albiginia. Okay? The way to think about this, this is sort of like a visceral serous membrane. Okay? This is lying directly on the surface of the testis. And then there's an outer layer, almost like a parietal layer, if we're talking about a serous membrane. In fact, it's derived from the parietal peritoneum. This is called the tunica vaginalis. Okay? And both of the testes are surrounded by both of these layers. Okay? Now, if we look at the testis, of course, it's surrounded by some membranes right here. Okay. The testis leads into what we call the spermatic cord. So here's actually the spermatic cord, the superior part of it. Of course, it actually continues down here. And what's important about the spermatic cord is that it contains a lot of important things from the testes point of view. So it contains arteries, of course, to supply blood. It supplies veins to drain that blood from the testes. It has a testicular nerve, which we call is just the male version of the gonadal nerve and then something called the ductus deferens, which most people refer to as the vas deferens. We're going to talk about the vas deferens a little bit later and then in a little bit more detail in one future video. So this is our spermatic cord right here, and of course there's one for each of the testes. Okay. Now if we follow the spermatic cord up, we see there's a region here where it's going to sort of cross through this region of dense connective tissue. Okay. So where it crosses through this, this is actually what's called the inguinal canal. Okay the inguinal canal. Um, there is a disorder that occurs whenever this inguinal canal, this tissue, tears. And it's actually what's called an inguinal hernia. And a lot of times what this is caused by is lifting weight that's too heavy. Some of the muscles that are actually up here, um, if they contract in such a way and pull on this, it can tear this tissue and lead to a hole here in this lining right here, a hole in the inguinal canal. Um, and actually one of the ways that they actually test for this is the physician will actually cup the man's uh, scrotum and they'll ask him to cough. And what happens is they cough um, you're actually contracting some muscles in your abdominal area, and what'll happen is you'll actually feel the testes actually kind of move up a little bit. And that's because the spermatic cord is actually moving up through that hole, um, something like that, okay? So that's your spermatic cord, and it's gonna go through this region of the sheet-like tendon called the inguinal canal, okay? And like I said, when that inguinal canal tears, or at least the tissue surrounding it, that gives you an inguinal hernia. Now, I mentioned we're going to talk about the ductus deferens a little bit later, too. Um, but basically, the ductus deferens is a path for sperm cells to travel through during ejaculation. So sperm cells are going to be produced in the testis, and under the control of ejaculation, uh, those sperm cells are going to move up through the ductus deferens, which does travel through the spermatic cord. And eventually we're going to follow the pathway and see that that leads out through the urethra. And that's, of course, how the sperm cells contained in the semen are going to exit. Now, something interesting that uh, some courses will talk about, there's a couple muscles here that um, actually play a role in protecting the sperm cells. So sperm cells, or just semen in general, have to be kept at an, at an appropriate temperature. And if the temperature gets too hot, then the sperm cells can actually die. 
Okay, if the temperature is too cold, there can be other problems as well. So regulating the temperature that the sperm cells exist in is extremely important. These two muscles, the cremaster muscle and the dartus muscle, play a role in that. Um, and we're really going to look at it from the perspective of too low of a temperature, so it's very cold. Um, men might experience this if they go take a cold shower or jump in a, a cold pool or something like that. Uh, what happens in response to low temperature is both the cremaster muscle and the dartus muscle contract. Now the cremaster muscle, what it does is it sort of pulls the testes upward, okay? So it pulls them closer to the body. Why would it do that? Well, it's just basic negative feedback. If the body temperature or just the temperature around the testes is too low, you need to maintain warmth of those sperm cells. So contraction of the cremaster muscle pulls the scrotum upwards, pulls the testes upward, and that actually pulls the testes closer to the body so that the sperm cells that are housed in there um, can actually uh, maintain the appropriate temperature. Okay? Um, if the temperature is too hot or too warm, then of course the cremaster muscle is not going to be contracted. It's going to be very relaxed and the testes will actually descend more away from the body because the body has heat. If it's too hot, get the testes away from the body so that the sperm cells don't burn up. Okay? The dartus muscle plays a similar role. What it's going to do instead is it's going to contract but sort of wrinkle the, the skin around the scrotum. And that actually also helps to maintain body heat. Okay? Um, if any of you have ever seen the show Seinfeld, the shrinkage scene that George Costanza has, basically he gets in a cold pool, I believe, and, and a woman walks in while he's stark naked. You can probably look that up on YouTube. He basically had contraction of both these muscles because he was in a cold pool. Let's move on and look at a lateral view of the testes. So if we look at the testis, this is just one of them, we see that the testis is composed of many different seminiferous tubules. Okay? So the seminiferous tubules are the site of sperm cell maturation from immature cells called spermatozoa. And we're actually going to discuss spermatogenesis, which is basically male meiosis in a separate video. But it suffices to say for now that within the testes you have many, many, many seminiferous tubules, which look like a bunch of small noodles, so to speak. And this is where sperm cells are made and where their maturation occurs, at least most of the maturation. Okay? What we see here is that all of these seminiferous tubules that are contained in the testis eventually converge into this structure called the reet testis. And the reet testis then opens up into what is called the epididymis. So if we actually look at the posterior side of the testis, so here's our testis in this picture, it kind of looks like an egg. So on the posterior side of that, this thing that kind of wraps around, this is the epididymis. And we're of course looking at a mid-sagittal plane cut of the epididymis. And what we see is there's a lot more tubules inside here as well. And all these tubules, what they essentially are is collecting points for all the sperm cells. Okay? Now, all the sperm cells as they're being made and that matured, they're moving from the seminiferous tubules into the reet testis and eventually into all these tubules, where they'll eventually travel downwards into the tail of the epididymis down here. And in general, the tail is really where uh, the final maturation occurs. Now even with that final maturation, sperm cells have the inability to swim, so they're not completely functional. But other than that one thing where they can't swim yet, they're pretty much completely mature when they get down here. And the tail of the epididymis is pretty much where they're stored prior to ejaculation. And so when ejaculation is stimulated, all these sperm cells that are here end up moving up, and what we'll eventually see in another video is that they're going to combine with solutions, or I should say uh, secretions, from a bunch of other glands, such as the prostate gland or the seminal vesicle. Okay. And so it's going to mix with a bunch of other stuff there from those glands, and those are going to provide the stimulus for those sperm cells to be able to swim. Okay. But hopefully what you see here is that from all of these tubules in the epididymis, eventually they kind of turn into the ductus deferens or the vas deferens, which is right here. And the ductus deferens then travels up the spermatic cord. Okay. So again, we're kind of seeing the pathway of sperm, at least the first part of it. Okay. All of their production and maturation occurs in the seminiferous tubules, which are within the testis. Then they move to the reet testis. 
Then they move to the epididymis, and from the epididymis, upon ejaculation, they move up to the vas deferens. Okay? I'll mention this in a separate video, but I'll also talk about it here. Uh, for some men who actually do not want to conceive children, um, one of the things that they can do to actually sterilize themselves is they go to a physician, and the physician performs what's called a vasectomy. Okay. I'm not actually familiar with exactly where on the ductus deferens they do the vasectomy, but it suffices to say that the physician will actually just clip the vas deferens. And so if you clip the vas deferens, then the sperm cells have no way to migrate um, upwards through the spermatic cord and eventually out. And so the man uh, can still have orgasm, but they cannot actually release any sperm cells. Okay. Um, and that's actually called a vasectomy. And the, the way the vasectomy gets its name is because it's cutting the vas deferens, a vasectomy. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. So I'm going to conclude this video right here. So we've covered a lot of relevant anatomy uh, so far. We're going to cover some more anatomy in uh, the next video. And what we'll hopefully see here is a continuation of the path that sperm cells are going to have to take on their way out during ejaculation. And that's actually a really good way to learn this because not only does it help you a little bit with the physiology, but also the anatomy because you're learning it in sequence. So hopefully you liked this video. Please make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.